Okay, so we're going to be going through some physics paper one revision and practice questions now. So this is in preparation for your exam, which is coming up. And so I would recommend you go through all the questions that we're going to do in this video, pause the video at each one and have a go. Okay, without further ado, then let's get into it. So the first question that we're going to be looking at, and I'll just make some space here. So the first question here is based on a real life exam paper. The battery in an electric car can be charged up fully in three hours and 45 minutes. The charging station has a power output of 7200 watts. Calculate the energy storage capacity of the car in joules. So feel free to pause the video, have a go, and let's get into the solution now. So the equation that we're interested in is the power is equal to the energy divided by the time or the energy transfer divided by the time taken. Now, if we're told that the power output is 7200 watts, then this is going to be equal to the total energy that we transfer to the car divided by that the time we use to transfer that energy. So we can just rearrange this equation. So we could get T is equal to, so actually, in fact, what we actually want to rearrange for is the energy. So if we rearrange for the energy, then we should get that the energy is equal to the power multiplied by the time, or in this case, 7200 multiplied by the time T. And so then uh, the next step we just need to actually put in our T, so the T we're given in the question is three hours and 45 minutes. So all you need to do is convert this to the T that we actually use in our formula. And you should know that in our formula, we need the T given in seconds, not in hours or minutes. So three hours and 45 minutes, two seconds. So you convert that, you can do that whichever way you want. The easiest way is to just take the three hours, multiply by 60, that will give you the number of minutes. Multiply by 60 will give you the number of seconds. Then you do the same thing for the number of minutes, 45 minutes multiplied by 60 seconds for each minute should give you the number of seconds as well. So if you do both of those in your calculator, you should get 10,800 in the first place. And for the second place, it's just 45 times 60, which is 2,700 on the calculator. And so then you just add both of those up together and you should get an answer of 13,500, okay? And I'll just move over so you guys can see what we did there. So now we have the time given to us in the right format. This is in seconds now. So we can just do the energy transferred is equal to 7200 multiplied by the time taken, which was 13,500. And if you put both of those in your calculator together, you should get the final answer. We should come out to approximately 77 million joules, or you can round that to 77 megajoules. Okay, uh, in your calculator, you get like 77, 77,762,700. And uh, so according to the question, then we should round this really to two significant figures. So if you round that to two significant figures, then technically this should be 78 megajoules, not 77. So we can actually change that. Okay, and that's your final answer. Okay, this next question is based off another exam question. It's worth three marks. And um, it's another electricity question. So you've got the potential difference across the battery is 512 volts. So it's linked to the question above. The resistance of the circuit connecting the battery to the motor is 3K ohms. Calculate the current in the circuit. So feel free to pause the video, have a go yourself, but let's actually get into the answer then. So the equation that we're interested in here is actually Ohm's law. So V equals I multiplied by R. And you can see in the question, we are given the voltage and we're given the resistance. So all we need to do is rearrange this for the current. So I will be equal to V over R. And so you can just plug in your numbers 512 and it's in the right units because it's volts divided by the R, which is 3K ohms. So 3,000 ohms. And if you do one over the other, you should get the current. And so you should get approximately 0 0.1706 and so on amps, okay? And so your final answer, we could give this to uh, one significant figure because you've got 3000 ohms, so I'll just give it as 0 0.2 amps. Okay, let's move on. Okay, a multiple choice question here then. We're told different charging systems use different electrical currents. Charging system A has a current of 13 amps. Charging system B has a current of 39 amps. The potential difference of both charging systems is 230 volts. How does the time taken to recharge a battery using charging system A compare with the time taken using charging system B? And we've got a few options here, so feel free to pause the video for yourself, read the options, and tick whichever one you think is correct. The first one we've got is the time taken using system A is triple the time of system B. Second one, system A is the same as system B, and the third, the time is going to be one third of the time for system A is going to be one third of the time for system B. So which of these do you think is correct? 
Well, you can actually do this just by observation. The power is basically equal to IV or the current multiplied by the voltage. If the voltage is the same, that means that the time, the power is going to basically be dependent on the current. And um, the power tells you the rate of transferring energy. So the higher the power, the faster that's going to happen. So if you have the power is going to be doubled, that means that the time taken to transfer that energy, same amount of energy, is halved. Okay, And that's all to do with the equation that the power is equal to the energy transferred divided by the time taken. So you can see here, the higher our power is, if our energy transferred is the same amount, which it looks like it is, since we're charging the same battery, that means that the time taken is going to change depending on our power output. So the higher our power output, the lower our time taken. And in fact, if everything is constant, we could write this, that the power is inversely proportional to the time taken, right? All of which is to say that if you double the power output, it will mean that the time taken will half. So in this case, because our current is proportional to our power as well, that means that basically we could write this, that the current is inversely proportional to the time taken. So if our current triples from A to B, that means B will take one third of the time as system A, okay? So essentially here, the correct answer is actually the first one. The time taken using system A is triple the time of system B because system B has three times the current of system A. So it will be three times faster or will take one third of the time, okay? Therefore, A takes three times as, as much time as system B. So it's a bit wordy, but hopefully you understand how we got there with the equations. Okay, and we're going to try and touch on as many of the topics as we can for paper one. So the next question, we're going to be looking at atomic structure and actually particularly nuclear physics and um, nuclear uh, equations over here. So a sample of polonium-210 was left for 414 days. After this time, it had a mass of 1.45 times 10 to the minus 14 grams. And I'll underline the key words again. And I would recommend you do this in your exam. The half-life of polonium-210 is 138 days. Calculate the initial mass of this sample. So let's go through it then. Uh, pause the video, have a go. But if not, let's actually go through the answer together. So basically, the idea is that the sample, the mass of the sample will half with each half-life. Okay, that's what the definition of a half-life is. Uh, essentially, with each half-life, that period of time taken the polonium-210 has basically decayed to something else. So we have polonium-210, it's left for 414 days and we're given the half-life is 138 days. So the first thing we want to work out is how many half-lives in 414 days. So we do 414, we divide it by 138. And what you'll get is a decimal, um, it will be 3 point something, something, okay? Essentially, the half-life tells us how many times the polonium is, the mass of the polonium is going to half. Therefore, we would say there's only been three half-lives here. Now we know that essentially um, the half-life is going to tell us what happens to the mass of the polonium. So if at the end of three half-lives it had 1.4 times 10 to the minus 4 grams, that means that before that basically it was doubled, right? Before the one half-life it was doubled, so we times it by 2. Before the second half-life it was times by 2 again. Before that third period of time, that third half-life, it was doubled again. Okay, so now this is accounting for the three half-lives. So we double it three times to get the initial mass. So you do 1.45, uh, this is actually times 10 to the minus 4, so let's rewrite that. 1.45 times 10 to the minus 4, and basically double it each time, and if you put that into your calculator, you should get 1.16 times 10 to the minus 3, and that's your answer in grams, okay? And hopefully it makes sense, uh, we got there. Okay, we're going to another calculation question. This time it's a five marker and it's all about specific latent heat. So how are you with your heat capacities and energy transfers in terms of thermal energy? Feel free to pause the video and have a go. We're told that when water is boiling, and again, we're going to underline all the keywords here. When water was boiling, 0.03 kilos of water turned into steam. The energy transferred to the water was 69 kilojoules. Calculate the specific latent heat or vaporization of water. Okay. So how do we actually work this out? We need our equation, first of all. When we're working with latent heat, what we can say is that the energy transferred is equal to the mass multiplied by the specific latent heat, which we're going to represent with that symbol L. Now, we actually want to uh, work out what L is. That's what we're told to calculate. So L will be equal to the energy transferred divided by the mass. So nice and simple, we just rearrange that equation. Then all we need to do is to work out 69,000 because that's the uh, 
energy in joules remember 69 kilojoules so you convert that to joules so you get 69,000 divide that by the m the m given to us is 0 0.03 kilograms so those units are fine so we use that and that is going to be equal to 2.3 million and then we need to say also the units so the easiest way to actually say the units if you don't remember what the units for specific latent heat are is to just look at the quantities that you divided by okay so the unit on the top of this fraction is joules and on the bottom is kilograms therefore the units for the answer we get out is going to be joules divided by kilograms or in other words joules per kilogram okay so that's the easy way you can work out the units so do remember that tip so the units we can plug in straight there is joules per kilogram and we've got our answer and we just need to make sure that we round it to this uh, correct amount of uh, significant figures so i've written already here um, if you look in the question it's given to everything to two significant significant figures so you want to actually give our answer to two significant figures as well so you could put two million uh, 2.3 million or you could even put this in standard form it's going to be 2.3 times 10 to the 6 joules per kilogram okay so hopefully that makes sense and uh, that's a trickier question it's worth five marks but actually you can see uh, rearranging the equation and actually plugging your numbers in is not that difficult maybe the only difficult bit there is is the units if you didn't know them okay and the last question we're going to be looking at is a question not officially from an exam paper but it is all about energy being transferred and you should be able to actually calculate the answers here so a roller coaster kite with a mass of 500 kilograms is lifted to a height of 20 meters at the top of the first hill and again let's go ahead and underline everything mass of 500 kilograms uh, lift to a height of 20 meters at the top of the first hill it then descends and reaches a speed of 15 meters per second at the bottom of the hill assume no energy is lost due to friction or air resistance they calculate the gravitational gravitational potential energy of the roller coaster car at the top of the hill calculate the kinetic energy of the roller coaster car at the bottom of the hill and determine the amount of mechanical energy converted from potential energy to kinetic energy so feel free to pause the video and have a go one thing i would say is um, you don't need to worry about this last line is not that important um, but go ahead and have a go okay so the first thing that we want to do is actually work out um, part a so calculate the gravitational potential energy of the roller coaster car at the top of the hill so we know that our equation for gravitational potential energy is going to be the mass multiplied by the gravitational field strength multiplied by the height okay so if we take um, basically the bottom of the hill as our zero point then we can work out how much potential energy we had in the first place uh, from the top to the bottom so we can just plug in our numbers here 500 kilograms multiplied by a height of 20 uh, in fact we want g first so g we can write as 9.8 and multiplied by the height which we said was 20 meters and so you should be able to work out then your gravitational potential energy that you started off with if you put that into your calculator you should get an answer of 98,000 okay and uh, the units for this would be joules okay so you've got 98,000 joules or gravitational potential energy at the top of the hill okay great let's move on to part b then so in part b we're basically trying to work out the kinetic energy of the roller coaster car at the bottom of the hill now uh, the best way to do this is actually uh, to use the equation for kinetic energy now the kinetic energy is equal to a half mv squared technically speaking if no energy was lost and all the energy from the gravitational potential energy was converted to kinetic energy then uh, these would be the same or they should be the same um, but as i said we're going to cross out that last line so let's actually have a look if that is the case by using our equation so we just do a half multiplied by the mass which we already know was 500 multiplied by v squared and we're told that the roller coaster reached a speed of 15 meters per second at the bottom of the hill so at the bottom of the hill the amount of energy it had it corresponds to that 15 meters per second okay so that's the amount of kinetic energy it had at the bottom of the hill so we can multiply this by 15 as well so if you do half times by 500 times by 15 then you should get an answer of 3750 joules of energy okay so you can see then that these answers are not the same and therefore energy has been lost somewhere along the way okay so this is actually the second part part c uh, determine the amount of mechanical energy converted from potential energy to kinetic energy so uh, in this case basically we're saying that this third form of energy is this mechanical energy it doesn't really matter what that means exactly essentially we're just saying there's a third form of energy that has been transferred here so if we take the 98,000 joules that we started with this is the energy we had at the beginning and we know that energy has to be conserved so therefore the 98,000 joules has to be equal to 3,750 
which is the energy we had at the bottom uh, that was the kinetic energy plus some unknown amount of energy we'll just call e and we'll call it el because it's almost lost energy right it's wasted energy uh, that we didn't want so then to work out what that el would be we do 98,000 take away this 3750 and you can actually again work that out and you should get an answer of 94,250 okay so the energy wasted or converted uh, I think we called it in the question mechanical energy is going to be 94,250 and once again the answer is in joules okay so nice um, simple questions there if you know your equations you should be able to work all of those out okay and that's it for this video so hopefully you guys found that useful and if you want any more of these kinds of videos for the other papers do let me know in the comments uh, put them down in the comments which questions you found difficult which questions were easy and how you're feeling for the paper